All I know is that reporter never contacted me again. My sister is dead, I've lost my ship, and that sandwich is howling like my nan's outdoor lavi on a hot summer day after the great spice up your haggis cook off. I'm a million miles from home. My crew hates me, and my best hope of staying alive is a side of beef who can't keep track of his shirts. You're using up all the air. I hate this ship. If you've ever been trapped in a room that's slowly running out of air, unable to leave because beyond those airtight doors lurks an assassin whose sole purpose in life is to feed you your own organs before launching you into unforgiving space with nothing but a spleen sandwich, you have some idea of what the Oz-9 crew is going through right now. And if you have been in that situation, we'd love to hear how you got out of it, so please leave a comment on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash oz9podcast. And quickly. The crew's only hope for survival is Leet, who is at large with the repair bot and, apparently, a plan. No. Come on, this will work. It won't, and we'll all die horticulturally. Horribly. You're a robot, you can't die. You can't even feel pain. Well, now that's actually a bit of a uh, misnomer there. See, your modern 778XX, such as ourselves, is actually equipped with fully functioning pain sensors. See? Ouch. That's stupid. Why would they give you pain sensors? It's evolution, isn't it? Living things feel pain to learn what to avoid in the future. Ow! Ah, uh, yeah! Now I'm learning! Oh! Hey, how to avoid, uh, excessively wordy explanations. Oh! Explanations! Inappropriate, uh, nay, emergency circumstances. Okay, I got it! This piano isn't going to work. Plan. It is. It's Jesse he's after, right? We get Olivia to fake Jesse's voice, draw him into an airlock, and flip. Simple. He's not after Jesse. What? What are you talking about there? A few days ago, I may have intercepted a masseuse. A message? A reporter from Earth was trying to make contact. I remember that. He said her crew was dangerous and her sister was dead. So? He was right. Yes. Well, he also sent along a recording. From the Sinister. Oh, jeez. Sister, you never told me that. Yes, well, you're right there. So perhaps if you paid attention from time to time, dear... What did the recording say? I'm not sure. I've only been able to access bits of it. It's voice encrypted, so only Jesse can hear all of it. From what I've been able to piece together, the Bichon Freeze was sent here to kill a manicurist. A mango. A manatee. Oh, for crying out loud. Help. A man. And in it, uh, Frise? Who's he here to kill? I don't know. But if Jesse can access the entire message, we should be able to figure it out. They're all in the crew room. Let's go. I, uh, think we were promised a few, uh, bandages here, if I'm remembering our agreement correctly. All right, but no sneaky trying to kill me until the assassin is gone. As per our extant arrangement, attempts to correct the previous sabotage situation vis-a-vis -vis forcible removal of the saboteur are temporarily suspended pending cessation of activity by the, uh, the, uh... Ran out of steam, did we, dear? Yeah, a little bit. Let's go! Heroic running! Hey! Arms! Heroic running to pod bay 7, where the arms are! Meanwhile, Jesse, Joe, Colin, and Captain Madeline are still locked tight in the crew room, and due to a lot of talking, and some screaming and hyperventilating from Colin, the two and a half hours of oxygen quickly became 30 minutes of oxygen, and now is about 14 minutes. 14 minutes of life left, which, to be honest, is about 14 minutes and 4 days more than I would have given them when they first emerged from their pods. How much time now? You asked me that 3 minutes ago. So? I said 17 minutes. 3 minutes ago. Uh, yes, fine. How long now? So, 15 minutes of air left. What? How do you know that? Math, Colin. 
it's not really that you're dying within a week of launch that's so surprising. It's that you nearly made it a whole week. Couldn't we open the doors for just a second? Let some new air rush in? Set the timer over? We could, only the air just the other side of that door is a rich mix of vanilla musk and deadly nerve gas that would kill you in less than a minute, leaving nearly 13 minutes of life you could have enjoyed if we hadn't. Define enjoy. Hello. Jesus. Jesus. How, have you been there the whole time? I have. How do you do that? <laughs> How does he do that? He's very blendy. When you talk, you use your air up faster. Also, you all sound a bit stupid. We're hypoxic. <laughs> or stupid. Did you want to say something, Joe? I had a thought. Oh, it's gone now. You know how sometimes you think you're going to sneeze and you don't? Like when your nose gets all tingly and you do that ha ah, ha ah, thing? And nothing happens. And you're left hanging there with a useless tissue in one hand and your face all scrunched up. Is this really how you want to use up your last bit of oxygen? I had a thought like that. Like a sneeze, it wasn't ripe, it just... It's away. The really annoying thing is it's not even gonna be Lady Bichon Freeze that kills us. Not really. We did his work for him by shutting ourselves in the crew room and closing all the vents. It had to do with the vents, the vent events. Oh dear, you've all gone all funny. What will you do after we're gone, Olivia? Thaw out the next crew in line? Next crew? Yeah, did you not know that? There's like dozens of crews all lined up like bowling pins. One crew gets ass 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 assassined, and the machine pops out the next bunch all in their places, ready to be rolled at. I've lost track of this now. Why am I talking about bowling? Damn. I wish I'd known about the backup crews. I could have dumped all of my lot and warmed up the next like toaster strudel. Oh, were, were they German? What? You said strudel. Thought maybe they were, I don't know, German or uh, Australian? Austra Austrian? How in the bloody hell would I know what the next crew would be? It was like a, it was like a metaphor or a, or a gerund or something. Who's Gerald? What? Is Gerald German? Is, is Germal Gerund? Yeah, I'm all tickly. I'd say that was hypoxia, except you all ate the sandwiches, so I'm not entirely sure what to blame here. How much time now? What was it? Was it Lee coming to save us? Whatever happened to him? Yes, what did happen to Mammary Man, the shirtless blunder? Been saving those, have we? Might as well use them all now, since we're all about to die. I am the thorax. I speak for the cheese. Cheese? I'm still working on that one. Better hurry. I've been trying to track him for ages, but my senses are all higgledy-piggledy. He could be anywhere, and he's probably lost wherever he is. Once more for the lady right at the back of the room. Worst <laughs> rescue ever! The vent from the aromatherapy system has filters. Mm. Heavy-duty ones for, uh, particulates. That's what I was trying to remember. Joe, you genius! You're right! What do you think, troops? What's best for bonus air? Orange, jasmine, lavender and lemon? Cinnamon apple? Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, just trying to make your first gulps of life-saving air pleasant ones. <laughs> I'm... We're... we're shut, shut the, the door. door! Lee, you're alive! And still very shiny. I'm here to save you. We're here to save you, the three of us. Okay, the two and a third of us are here to save you. Why does it smell like pie? Hooray! How exactly will you be saving us? Ooh, did you kill the Bichon Freeze on the way here? Yeah, still, still thinking, thinking that's uh, Freeze A there. We haven't seen him. He's holed up somewhere. On your left. Jesus! Jesus! You better not be eating any of my sandwiches. Just want to make that clear. Bon appetit, I say. They're likely to kill him quicker than any of you lot. Ooh, ooh, Captain Hardy, we brought you a message. Is someone eventually going to tell him my name is Captain Jesse? 
Her name is Jessie, Leet. Just Jessie. Oh, right. We have a message for you from your sister. Wait, you have a message from Glinda? Nope, nothing. Is anyone getting this? Play the message, Leet. Emily, play the message. Emily, are you referring to me as Emily? Well, you need a name. It was my dog's name when I was a kid. And you thought that Emily seemed apt for me. What makes you think I don't have a name? I don't know. I uh, kind of like Emily. So, uh, what'd you name me? Nothing. Uh, I only had one dog. Look, could we get on with this before Labichon Freeze shows up and murders us all? Come on, Em. Roll the tape. Let's get on with the heroing. Hello? Hello, little rabbits, little mice, little tiny squeaky things that huddle together when they are feared. I am talking with you. We have an intercom? Can I please do some rescuing here? Yes, everybody shut up and let Leet get on with being a hero. Thank you. I have a little confession. Oh, come on. I have fooled you all because I am very crafty. I am not here to kill Mademoiselle Jesse. What did he say? He said he's not here to kill Jesse. I knew that. We knew that. Well, good for you. Now shut up. I knew that already, though. However, my instructions at this point are a little hazy. You've got to be joking. Well, at least you're off the hook. I knew I was the target all along. I have enemies, you know. Powerful ones. There must have been some really bad chimney sweeping. What? Oh, yes. uh, There was this one chimney. The hell with it. Blah, blah, blah. Cover story. Captain, I demand you protect me. Will you shut up? All I know is I am here to kill a small, round German fellow with a name so long I am snoring before the end of it. Professor Dr. Hippie Hoppy Von Sauerkraut or something. You see? Already I am sleeping. So boring, these long names. Oh dear. Uh, Maggie? All this stupid day, I have been searching the pods, one after the other, after the next, after the following, after the... Who is up? Take a number and wait to be assassin, please. But I don't find him. My eyes, they are crossing. I am tired and cranky, which is no good for anyone. Uh, uh, I know who he's looking for. So, here is what I am thinking. If you help me to find Air Professor Dr. Von Boren makes sleepy name, I will let you leave. We will all work together, and when I have my prey, I will take your little life raft and we will sail away. I give you one hour. Sounds good to me. Anyone see my reading glasses? Now just hold on. The passengers on this ship are under our protection. We can't just let him pick one out like a chocolate out of the box. But if he thinks we're working with him, we can overpower him. Or we could give him the crappy Wiener schnitzel filled chalky right out of the box, and we all get to Earth 2 alive. Besides, pods are going dark left and right on this plague ship. What's one more? My point is right. There's a code of honor at stake here. Maybe you have to be a captain to understand. Didn't you just abandon your entire lot of passengers just to save your own skin? You really know how to ruin a heroic moment, don't you? Uh, Joe? Oh, I I think he's gone. No, Charles Babbage, how do you do that? Clearly, no one is interested in what I have to say about the matter, so I think I might just switch up the aromatherapy. Maybe try a higher fan setting. Oh, and what scent is this? German Shepherd in a gentle rain? That sounds nice. Oh, this is interesting. Teen boy hits puberty on a hot summer day. Let's give that one a whiff, shall we? I'm really regretting the olfactory upgrade right now. And the lung simulator. Right, now that I've got your attention... To my artless, gulpish, hulk and wreck of a sister, who has probably as this message as playing, wrestling at the fact that I have everyone's attention. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, there's the mealworm. Uh, message. No, I meant that one. 
I must have coughed hard enough to bring it up. Right, I'll just hold my very important information until after the Saturday morning cartoons then, shall I? And of course she doesn't speak English either. Why is she so small? Uh, she's a hologram, dearest. Just a picture. But she's moving? <sighs> okay, more like a video then. What's she wearing? A long white dress, looks like. Maybe a robe. Strange hairdo. Hush up, my dear, and I'll translate when it's over. Do we have any cinnamon rolls? As you knew, the chief of the newspaper asked me to look into the all's crews and figure out who they were choosing and assigned and that. What? Wait! Shut up and listen, you twat. I did a little digging, not much. Who cares about your stupid crew? But then I found something out. The crews are crap. Hey now. <laughs> they were assembled for failure. They figured out the absolute worst combinations of temperament, skills, risk tolerance, and personal hygiene. And wallop, there's your crew. Stick a captain on top. Doesn't matter who it is, as long as they're guaranteed to bollocks things up further. Or at least not fix anything when it goes tits up. <laughs> I'm starting to see why you're not fond of your sister. Proper hag, isn't she? Yeah, she really is. Or was. Sorry for your loss. Oh, right. I forgot for a moment that she was dead. Oh, well, it's all right then. Seriously? Can you stop talking for five minutes? Carry on, corpse. What did you call me? Never mind. Shut up. She's actually quite attractive. You're joking. But here's the big thing. All of these old ships are insured to the hilt. The more ships that go down, the richer G2 gets. The plan is to launch and immediately dissolve the company, so there's no one to sue. Meanwhile, the insurance money gets funneled into an account on a beach somewhere. So not only is the crew crap and the ship about as space-worthy as a cardboard box, but there are all kinds of traps and whatnots to make sure no one makes it off your boat alive. So, you know, be careful pushing buttons and operating any of the machinery, and for God's sake, don't eat the sandwiches. <laughs> oh, oh, and as a backup, should everything else fail, or fail to fail, as the case may be, all of the ships were outfitted with an apocalypse device that should destroy the entire crate at some random point. <laughs> Less attractive now. What's she saying? Uh, why is everyone so pale? Here's the thing, though, and this is where it actually gets interesting. Lovely. The fact that her sister's aboard the giant floating death trap was really a bit tedious, but now she's paying attention. The scientist that built the AIs and designed some of the other bits and pieces, the good bits anyway, he found out what G2 was up to and stowed away on one of the ships. Well, that was stupid. Now, wait a minute. Let her talk. I'm sure he had his reasons. Apparently, his plan was to figure out how to save the ship then broadcast the information to any old ships that hadn't blown up yet. See? Good man. That's who the assassin is after. Dr. Friedrich von Harpersetzer. He must be aboard the Oz-9. That's what I was trying to tell you. That's who Lady Jean Fries wants us to help him find and kill. The one bloke who might just be able to keep us alive. Well, you lot anyway. I've already loaded myself up to the cloud if this ship goes ass biscuit. If he succeeds, He'll save millions of lives, possibly. If he fails, well, hmm. Oh, you didn't take Mum's Cartier bracelet with you, did ya? It looks so much nicer on a wrist that's reliably clean. Ta says. Uh, Emily? Yes? Can you delete her for me? If you wish. Can you make it hurt? I'll do my best. So, uh, what's going on? We have to help an assassin kill the one person on the ship who can save everyone. And no, it's not you. So if the assassin really, really wants to kill this guy and he doesn't care who else dies, why doesn't he just take the shuttle and blow up the nine? 
That is a very good question. Olivia, how much time do we have? Eh? Or before Lady Chonfries bust down the door and demand an answer? Whichever's first. N nine minutes. Until? Oh, let's let that be a surprise, all right? Right. We need a plan. Gather around, troops. We've got nine minutes to get our heads together and figure out what's next. You realize that this particular group of people were assembled expressly for their inability to work as a team? Eight minutes. I guess we'll just have to figure it out. Seven. Wait, that wasn't a full minute. Uh, n no, I miscalculated. Not my fault. Uh, six minutes. I'm reasonably confident about the six, though. Should we use the whiteboard? All oh, these sharpies are dead. They look brand new, but it's like all the ink has been sucked out of them. We have an overhead projector. We could use that. What's wrong with good old-fashioned paper? We have one of those big flip chart things. Hang on, it was over here earlier. You can't use a flip chart without sharpies, so that's not useful. <laughs> Funny story about flip jets. In 1887, back on Earth... With somewhere around six minutes of time remaining, the crew must decide how to outsmart Les Bichons Frise, and it's not looking good. Spoiler alert, they spent most of that time deciding how to brainstorm, before finally settling on the flip chart and some sort of condiment from the kitchen to write with. When gated galaxies were going for a maximally dysfunctional crew, they really knocked it out of the park with this bunch. Fortunately, Le Bichon Frise got very lost trying to get to the crew room, giving Madeline and company a little extra time. Merde. And merde again. Where is the crew room? I can hear the elevator music de fromage, but I cannot find it. You've been listening to Tim Sherburn as Colin and Head 2, or Emily, Bonnie Brantley as Jesse, Eric Perry as Joe and Head 1, Aaron Clark as Le Bichon Frise, Richard Cowan as Leet, Shannon Perry as Olivia and Madeline, me, Richard Nadolny, as your narrator, and introducing June Eubanks as Glenda. Our theme music and other music was composed and performed by John Faley. Oz 9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry. Against all odds, our intrepid crew are still alive, so be sure to subscribe to Oz 9 on your favorite podcatcher, because seriously, their time has got to be about up. Until next time, Space Monkeys, narrator out. <laughs> <laughs>